In calculating the volume of a solid, we saw that our goal is to slice these volumes up into smaller pieces and use Riemann sum, finding the lower bound, finding the upper bound, and then finding the area of the cross section using Riemann sum, then taking the limit, and the definite integral help us to do the calculation. For example, in general slicing method, suppose a solid object extends from A to B, and the cross section of the solid, which is perpendicular to X axis, has an area given by a function like A, and this function is integrable on closed interval A to B. Then the volume of the solid, as we saw before, can be calculated using the definite integral from A to B of this integrable function A with respect to X. Sometimes for simplicity, we can convert this into Y as you saw before. So this is the cross section. And as you can see, this is an integrable function. And X ranges between A to B. We went over multiple examples. For example, let R be the region in the first quadrant bounded by coordinate axis and the curve y equals to 1 minus x squared. And a solid has a base R and the cross section through the solid is perpendicular to the base and parallel to y axis as squares and we were easily found the volume by multiplying 1 minus x squared by 1 minus x squared, which is the area of the cross section. So as you saw before, this is the definite integral between 0 to 1 of 1 minus x squared to the second power with respect to x. And this guy was, if you write it in expanded form, it becomes the definite integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus 2x squared plus x to the fourth dx and then calculating the integral was very easy for you because you were able to apply the power rule and we saw that this definite integral in turns becomes 8 over 15. So this is basically the general method of finding the volume. Everything is crystal clear. You have the area and then you just need to find the area of the cross section, plug that into the definite integral formula and take the integral. In calculating the volume, sometimes we have solids of revolution. The disk method help us to calculate the integral, the definite integral using pi r squared as the area of the base. So in that case, if you have a circular object, the area is pi r squared. But this r here, as you can see, is fixed. Compare this r with r or the radius here, which is changing as x move horizontally. So now the area is pi f of x squared because r depends on your f of x. It's just a function. It's not a fixed value now. So then you take the definite integral from A to B with respect to X and calculate the volume of the revolution with respect to X axis. So again, please pay attention, R is a function here. One example that we saw was finding the volume of revolution when you have a curve Y equals to square root of X and x is bounded between 0 and 4. We are revolving this about x-axis, and it generates a solid, and we are interested in finding the volume of that solid. For simplicity, we visualize this between 0 and 1 for the sake of space. And as you can see, the cross-section is a circular object. And then to calculate the volume, we are using the disk method. 
So we saw that this curve, which is square root of x, start revolving about x-axis. And this is the 3D object. So basically, A of x is this disk. And it has a radius. The radius is changing as your function y equals to square root of x is changing. And we saw that the volume is pi r x to the second power or f of x to the second power dx. And it was the definite integral 0 to 4 pi square root of x to the second dx. And then it was simply pi the definite integral 0 to 4 x dx, which is equal to pi over 2 x squared and x ranges between 0 to 4 which gives us 8 pi. This is the volume of this object. Another method is finding the volume when you have two curves involved. In that case, we're going to use the method of washer method. The volume can be calculated finding the larger area minus a smaller area and the cross section looks like a washer that's why we call it a washer method so for example here you have two curves one curve is this green curve here and the larger curve which is just right here on top of it which is in blue and you have this object right this region then you revolve it about x-axis. If you look at the cross-section, the cross-section looks like a washer, right? This purple object, this purple washer that is moving from the origin and gets to the maximum part, which is just right here, looks like a washer. So you're basically finding the larger disk area and finding the smaller disk area and do the subtraction. And this gives you the area of this washer. And then we go back to the volume formula. The definite integral from A to B of the larger area minus the smaller area. So it's a common mistake for students that they write it this way. They say that, hey, it is pi the larger r minus the smaller r and then they square this this is wrong everybody we can't do that this is a whole different object so when you're calculating the volume of revolution using washer method this is basically the larger area minus the smaller area and then they you take the definite integral of it and this revolution is about x-axis. If it's about y-axis, then we have to switch all variables. The region R is bounded by graphs of f of x equal to square root of x and g of x equals to x squared. So you have square root function and then you have x squared, which is a quadratic function. You're bounding x between 0 and 1. What is the volume of the solid that results when r is revolved about x-axis? Well, if you look at the object here, you have square root function on top. Down here, you have x squared. So if you revolve this about x-axis you have a larger area and you have a smaller area the area is pi f of x squared minus g of x squared which is basically if you want to write it in expanded form it is pi f of x to the second minus pi g of x to the second this is the larger area 
for the disk, and this is the smaller area for the disk. It can be written as pi square root of x to the second because it has larger y value or the outer radius is square root of x minus x squared to the second power, smaller y value. Perfect. So when you're revolving this about x-axis, this is the 3D object that you're getting. And as you can see, the cross section is this washer. So the area is bounded between these two disks. Starting from zero and going to the maximum value, which is just right here. Perfect. It's equal to pi x minus x to the four. Now you can just take the integral, definite integral, and calculate the volume. This is equal to the definite integral from zero to one. It's basically given in the question to us. Pi x minus x to the fourth dx. Remember the power rule. If you have the integral of a power function, guys, this is not exponential function. This is a power function. For exponential function, we have different formulas. The integral of power function u to the n du is u to power n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 plus constant of integration, which in terms is equal to pi times x squared divided by 2 minus x to the fifth divided by 5, x ranges between 0 and 1. But please pay attention. Plug in 0 here makes everything to be zero. So just plug in one using fundamental theorem of calculus, you get a half minus a fifth times pi, which is three pi over 10. So this is the volume of this solid or object.